we just had a certain mindset approaching while we were doing it. Like everybody was like, when I get to the NFL, when I get here, when I do this, when I do this, that's the same energy I had. So I knew like me being an artist, I'm not going to be somebody who steps backwards. I'm going to be somebody who builds off the momentum of what I've already done. The One More Time Music Podcast, genuine conversations with genuine people about music. Hosted by Henry with a three and Playback Ben. We're from Bimo Coops to Pins Hall, strong one distance, so party one more time. Party one more time, party she like one more time. They party one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of the One More Time Podcast. It's Thursday. I love this day. I'm your host, Playback Ben, here with my co host, Henry with a three, aka the Trap Jack Black. I still prefer White Ice Cube, but. You and TikTok. <laughs> Nonetheless, Henry, who do we have on the podcast today, my friend? Welcoming in on episode 39 of the One, One More Time podcast, legendary rapper, singer, songwriter, actor, dancer, it's Aaron Carter. <laughs> <laughs> AC. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Aaron. Yo, he thought you were talking about him. So so <laughs> <laughs> you literally thought Did it was all. No, I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Aaron, I mean, Wix. <laughs> He thought it was all about him. Well, because the first few things actually made sense. Yeah. But then I guess actor and dancer. I I guess we lost him at actor and dancer. But I don't know. I mean, do you have moves? Do you have moves? You're a dancer, right? Aaron Carter, don't ever try me like that again. (laughs) That's epic. In all seriousness, folks, we have Mr. Wix Patton on the podcast. Don't play with me. Wix is a tough guy to nail down. We finally got him on the show. Come on, man. We're here. He's working. Took a little bit. But I'm so glad that you, you know, finally made it out, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, I had to make sure I got to number 39, episode 39, to be able to, you know, accept the, accept the gig. Yep, make sure we, for we, sure. we could get for to sure. 39 episodes. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, so you're from Peachtree City, Georgia. Is that right? Yeah, you know, from around that area, yeah. Shout out. For those that don't know, it's the golf cart capital of Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, well, you learn something new every day. Did yeah. you have a golf cart growing up? Yeah, flooded with golf carts everywhere. Everywhere? <laughs> yeah, you, you take a golf cart all over the city. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally Dude, like no there's idea. more golf cart lanes than there are like car, car lanes. lanes. Yeah, you're riding around like 14 years old. What? <laughs> yeah, that's how I just started. They golfing had golf a cart lot, parking so. at the school and everything. Golf cart parking. Yeah, like yeah. mini spots. I'm not making this shit up, Crazy. Henry. Wow, this is real talk. This is real talk. But so, so you end up going to UGA. <laughs> And, and, you know, walk on the football team there. Yes. Was football your main sport growing up? Uh, basketball. Yeah, basketball is probably my main sport. Because you're tall, bro. How tall are you? Uh, I'm about 5'7". Five, That's five, a lot. 5'6". Five, five, <laughs> but, like, with stilettos on, he's, like, 6'7". <laughs> <laughs> yeah, threw a pair of sneakers on. I'm, like, yeah, about 6'5". <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah a pair mean, of shoes. Yeah, th- I mean, they could probably tell when he walked out the door in the intro that <laughs> yeah. he, was a, he was a tall guy. Show the wide angle for that, oh. for sure. But yeah. yeah, so so football was kind of like second though to I was to pissed basketball, off about football growing up because I was I didn't hit a growth spurt till I was like a junior in high school. Mm. So I was always really sh- like short. So I was never getting a lot of minutes. I was definitely getting but- benched in like rec league football, basketball. I was like a sixth or seventh round pick. Used to be so salty, and. So sports, I mean, for me, I, I didn't get good really in, in basketball and football. Football, I didn't get good until I was a junior. And that's whenever I really took football seriously and decided I was going to play. Really senior year, I took it seriously. And that's when I, you know, put on 70 pounds and like, you know, decided this was what I was going to do. This is how I'm going to try to get into a good school. But for me, yeah, I was always a basketball player, mainly because I got cut in eighth grade. And then um, and in football, I got cut. And so after that, I was like, fuck football. I'm finna just, I'm finna just try to focus on basketball. Went deep in basketball, made my way back to football. And then, yeah, I ended up changing my whole life because I never really had that good of grades. But, you know, football opened up a whole nother door for me, you know, committing to Louisville when Lamar Jackson was over there and then mm. decommitting whenever uh, I had the opportunity to, to go to Georgia. And they say, you know, We'll be able to get you through, you know, push you through your grades and everything, get you into the school, take care of certain things as you being a preferred walk on. But we're out of scholarships this late in the year. But, you know, you'll be the only tight end we'll bring in in this class and we'll think there'll be a real opportunity for you. So I took that and I remember when Kirby Smart had brought me into his office to to talk to me and give me that opportunity. It was just like surreal because I was like, damn, like two years ago, I wasn't even playing football at all. That's what amazes me. I'm like. 
At he didn't all. even start taking it seriously until junior, he gave junior up on year. it. Yeah. Until the growth really, spread. junior year, I didn't even take it seriously. I just decided to go play because our starting receiver switched school. So I was like, I'm going to go try out. <laughs> there was a hole to fill. The door opened. Yeah. Yeah, it cracked I was like, open. I was like just... you know what? I, I failed. I got cut by this, this this coach who told my dad, you know, Wicks is just not an athlete. You know, some some kids are just good dads. He told, me, he told my dad that. And he told my dad told me that. So I was like, you know what? You know, fuck this guy. Wow. <clears throat> I'm going to go make something happen. We love Damn. a good comeback story, man. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy, though, because I don't know. I mean, for me, just the level, I don't care if you're a preferred mm -hmm. walk-on, a right. normal walk-on, a scholarship player, like being on the team at UGA, I mean, that, like. It was crazy. I mean, they won the exactly. championship that's, this year. Yeah. That's as good as it gets, right? So, yeah. like, to, to go from someone that wasn't fully invested into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you just like My kick it into hydro year, gear? Or bro, like? I show up like, so look, and so this is what I'm, I feel to mention too. Why I really got into music was like ninth and 10th grade, 11th grade. That's when I really got serious in the music, dropping mixtapes in high school and stuff. And then- So around the same time. Yeah, but no, nah, but once football really got serious, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be like this dude who has all these mixtapes get uncovered when I get to Georgia. And mm. I'm just like clown. I want to be taken seriously because the opportunity, like I seen what was in front of me. So I took down the mixtapes and everything, focused on football, took, you know, stopped doing music, which really broke my heart because I always felt like I was an artist and had that kind of like that gift and everything. And um, so I just basically just was supporting my homies and everything who was making music and then just, you know, put all in with the football. So, yeah. Wow. So you go to UGA and and you do kind of like hang up the music for a little bit, yeah, right? Like completely, you like, completely. Yeah, like you buckled down and you're like. Yeah, I was dieting for football. I was training like four times a day. I was just went super <laughs> sane. I completely quit smoking, quit drinking, like eliminated myself from everybody and just was like going super sane, trying to be this dude, like trying to form into this person I knew I could be. And I never knew how far I would take it. Like I, I never knew like. Georgia was going to be where I was at. If I knew that the whole time, I would have worked, you know, maybe even harder. But the whole time I was just going, going, going. Because I'm like, this is my only real shot into anywhere. And I'm seeing, like, people get college acceptances and all this mm -hmm. shit. And then I remember what was so funny. Because whenever I did get the offer from Georgia and committed, all my classmates were so salty at me. Because people are getting turned down because of grades Cause they're like and doing their like homework that. trying to go to UGA. Yeah, they're like, man, doing... fuck Wicks. You're not even that good at football. <laughs> Like, I'm, all of them hated on me, and I just, like, yeah, I'll see y'all at Georgia. I'll see all of y'all at Georgia. That's <laughs> right. That's crazy. So, legend. You, you know, you kind of buckle down, start, <laughs> Drop out. start doing, yeah, exactly. So, you start doing, you know, hardcore football training, dieting, really trying to, like, make that, that shit happen. But then, yeah. you, but then you do let music back into your life, mm -hmm. um, and, and you end up actually, like, burning the candle at both ends. I mean, you're literally, yeah. like... Paint us the picture of what your average day looked like when you were doing both music and football. Yeah, like after like after up. after the shit went the shit went viral at the Rose Bowl. Tell tell yeah. the people that story real yeah, quick. Yeah, for those that don't know about uh, it. just okay, so we're in LA for the Rose Bowl because we made it out there. It's a bowl game that you you know, it's a college football playoff and we're we're out there to play Baker Mayfield's Oklahoma team and while we're out there, we're going like on team events at night. You know, you're going to like Disneyland one day. You're going to fucking uh, comedy club one night. And that was whenever it happened. We're in this comedy club and everybody, our whole team's in there. A whole bunch of the faculty, staff, you know what I mean? Like the, uh, all that type of shit. And uh, there's, there's people on stage freestyling. Some of our teammates that were like starters on the team, just bullshitting, just on the stage rapping and. Uh, they're Is like, this part right. of the comedy show? And nah, this was just okay. for somehow they got on stage and got <laughs> access to a mic. Like our team was like a whole bunch of class clowns at Georgia. Like, yeah. like people were just cutting up. Like no one cared. Like I don't know, but yeah, the DJ is just playing instrumentals. I don't know. I guess they hooked up to the Ox. All I know is I'm just sitting. <laughs> they in there. took over the comedy club, <laughs> turned it into an open and mic. Like the, and it's crazy because the comedians that came out too were like these star-studded comedians, but. Before all that happened, yes, yeah, so and then they're like, all right, does anybody want to come on stage and spit something before we before we get into the comedians coming out? Wow. And I'm just sitting there like and like the people around me are like some of the other walk on my other walk on homies, one of them being Stetson Bennett, who was like the quarterback this year yep. at Georgia. And he was like, Wigs, 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 most Wigs, Wigs gotta go out there, Wigs. And so then like a bunch of my teammates were like, Yeah, Wigs, and I'll start joining in. So then people are like Clearly you have to go. But my teammates are like that don't know I could freestyle. Some of my teammates knew I could freestyle because I'd be at the, 
apartment, you know what I mean? Like freestyling with everybody, just rapping and ever like girls would be over or whatever, and trying to, you know, look good or whatever. I just could all I just always could freestyle, so I would whip that out at the best time. So Anyways, I just they're all like, yeah, I'm super embarrassed. My face is super. I'm looking down. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. Please stop. Like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Because I'm like, awesome. this is about to be so humiliating. I'm making myself yeah. look so dorky. Like, I'm already like trying to just, just gain some type of respect as a tight end in that fucking team. So You're about to go backwards. Now I'm about to go up there and be a rapper. And I have like this Justin Bieber, like smooth silk hair. Like, I just, I just don't, like wide neck. I'm like 250 pounds. I just don't look like nobody. I look like a country music singer. <laughs> and so then like next thing you know, <laughs> so then yeah, next thing you know, their uh, Gant goes up on stage, who's like one of our like uh, coaches. He's like, "Wix, if you don't come up here and freestyle, I'm a uh, I'm gonna tell Coach Smart you were late for curfew." And so that meant like you gonna have to run the whole practice. And I'm just like, "Oh!" So then everybody's like laughing and cheering. So I'm like, "All right, but I guess I'm gonna go up there because I'm gonna just at this point if I don't go up there, I'm gonna just look like a you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all right. you had no choice. Yeah. At this point. So I just walk up there, I get the microphone. There's a bunch of people on stage and they throw a beat on. It was like mask off or something. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. up there and I just I'm like and I just start rapping. I just I don't even remember anything of what I said <laughs> or what was going on, but I was just freaking flowing, dude. And That's everybody was awesome. going crazy. And so then everybody's videoing. So then I walk off stage and then everybody's like, and then Roquan Smith was like, no, 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 fuck that. Wix, you gotta go do that again. You gotta do that again. So I'm like, oh, so I got the mic. At this point, everybody, like, you got, like, Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle and Sony people in the front row of their cameras, like, looking at me, like, what you going to do? And I'm just like, <laughs> this is so funny, man. I don't even mean to be name dropping. This shit was just funny as hell. So I just started rapping again, and, and that's whenever the videos kind of went viral because some of my teammates were just freaking out at, at the, they all at the situation. It. And it went next next day, I got posted on Twitter, and Coach Lamar had brought it up in the team meeting and played the video. It was like, you know, when you're recruiting people, you don't always know everything about them. You know, you know they're a good <laughs> tight end, and you know this or whatever, but you don't know necessarily this about them. Then he played the video, everybody started freaking out. Oh, and so man. then after that, I was like... So he was like lighthearted about it? He loved it. And, okay. and all the coaches nice. loved it. And it was like I gained... It was like every, I gained an identity on the team. And it was like, whoa. Like cool. I've always been this this rapper, right? Yeah. So everybody's like calling me MGK and different stuff at the time. Like I, I used to love... I used to do music and everything. So then I, it just almost gave me a certain swagger back as a person. I remember at the time I was depressed and feeling like I had lost that. Because I had some friends around me too that just were different than me. And they always... I don't know. I just I just never could fit in and it was just because I guess they would wanted me to conform to be a certain type of person I wasn't. And it was like once I had freestyled and then it was like people kind of like seen this side and they were like cuz people didn't really know who I was really. They humanized you. Yeah, so then after that though I started hanging out with with, with uh with more people and people that could rap and just different different friends that I had and it was just crazy the shift of just you know, we go to the national championship and while we're out there and uh. <laughs> yeah, we ended up losing on the last play of the game that freshman year. But, but anyways, after that, I started making music with one of my teammates named Tyreek McGee, who who uh, he actually plays in the NFL to this day. And um, he just was like, "Yo, you got to come freestyle with us at the circle," because we had a bunch of teammates that could rap. You know, like the culture is heavy, man. Like a lot of the ball players grew up obviously like listening to hip hop heavy, and you know, it's just uh, it's just something that people do, man. So like. We would, you know, rap and everything. Then we decided to make some songs. So we made three songs. Whoa there, a song called Carlos Santana, and a song called DJ Tree, who was a DJ in Athens that we were going and doing a bunch of shows with at the time. So we put out, those, I guess it was a whole EP called The Experiment. And um, we put out the song Whoa there. And then after that, you know, it did really well. And um, all the, you know, blogs picked it up, you know, because they were just like, all oh, this college, you know, college football players from Georgia drop a hip, you know, drop a song. So then, People are eating it up off of that, you know, because media loves to to hop onto things. They got like some radio playing, crazy stuff was happening. And think about me as an artist who would try to put out mixtapes, try to put out songs, got clowned in my hometown. People were calling me Wix Khalifa. People were making fun of me all <laughs> the, the way, time. By the way, on Spotify, if you type in Wix, it shows Wix Khalifa. Which is bullshit. But, sorry, but if you go to like, Wix Patton, you can that. find me. It's all right. It's yeah, all right. Yes. I was like, but soon enough, Wix Patton will Very be You type in Wix P, I'm up there. Yeah, there P, you know you what I'm saying? I'm the, the top P. Wix P. It's all right. <laughs> I'm the top Wix P. Yeah, you already know. So, 
Yeah, man. I think uh, so. I forgot what the fuck I was talking about. What was I saying? Well, so you have this video or like these series of videos that kind of like started oh, off. Yeah. So, but so then yeah. you start really like diving back into music, and you were going crazy. Your schedule was insane. Like, yeah. paint us the picture of like. Oh yeah, so that's where we're at. My yeah, fault. Exactly. I get a crazy backstory. You're good. So look, yeah, so yeah, so, like so I'm, I'm dropping up. those we songs. Had to hear the Rose Bowl Yeah, story, yeah. Though. So oh well, look, because I'm dropping those songs, and that's what gave me the thousands of fucking followers, and, and I got verified on social media on Twitter, and. Cause it was like the the media. I had I had realized something. I'm like, whoa! I have a certain power behind dropping songs and having my teammates post it. They're reaching thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. They're reposting me, retweeting me. The fans are jumping behind it. They're loving it. Other college, you know, football players are getting behind it. They're loving it. And now it's becoming a thing where all these other athletes that rap, they're loving it. So then it's just like, boom! Like this shit's working for me. So. Uh, what what happened was is I remember I went to Rolling Loud on a trip with some of my teammates, and that was where I met my boy Davis. Well, I had a friend named Davis Kelly who was already a, a, a former UGA football player who was kind of managing me at the time. You know, after we had made some songs, when I say manage, I just mean that he was somebody who had connections, right? He was somebody who got me in the studio, who kind of you know knew about some shows. They were they were having me pull up to house parties and stuff, and. Like, it was crazy, the stuff I was doing just because I was a UJ football player. I was getting to play, like, these crazy fraternity parties in front of, like, a thousand-plus kids just because of who, you know, playing on the team. Yeah. Like, they would bring me and Tyreek out. We would do five songs, and a bunch of our teammates would come out. I'm on stage, like, Justin Fields and some of my other, like, freaking DeAndre Baker, me, Cole. Some of my other homies, Brian Herring, they're just on stage with me, and we're, like, rappers. But we're, you know what I mean? But then we got to practice next week. But we're on stage, like, for a crowd of people. It just was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Getting to live that double life, uh, but musically. So once I ended up getting with that manager, I got with this dude named Josh Langley. He, uh, you know, introduced me to this studio called Walker Street Studios in Atlanta. Um, and he introduced me to a guy named Steve Hybicki and Tyler Ogden. Those Shout guys, out Steve the Sauce. Yeah, Steve the Sauce you know Hybicki. Steve? Yeah. I love Steve. So Steve Steve is a guy who basically sauced up 100 miles. He made 17 versions of it, and he was wow. uh, executive producing all my music. So I was going in. So yeah, so basically to a typical day, I would wake up at 7 a.m., and go to tutoring or whatever. From tutoring, I would go to workouts. From workouts, we would go to class. From class, we would go back. We would go eat. After we eat, we go to meetings. From meetings, we go to practice. From practice, we go to um, uh, whatever it was. Man. I'm exhausted just, yeah, just hearing about uh, it. But mentoring. We had these like hour mentoring. Mm. After mentoring, you know, you have your tutoring. From tutoring. You go to, uh, you know, back home, and by then it's probably like 10 o'clock and everybody's hanging out or, they're, you know, studying or whatever. And I would drive an hour and a half to Atlanta <laughs> and uh, get in the studio with Steve and, and Josh and everybody, and, and we would cook, man. And we would make just, it was so much passion in the music, and, and I just learned how to be an artist. I just was, anybody I'd meet, man, I'd meet a, a, a flute player, I'd meet a trumpet player, a drummer, a, a, a keyboard player, anything, I would bring them in. I'd say, yo, we're getting in the studio on Tuesday, come through. And we'd just show up, and I'd say, yo, play, play a melody. I bet he would play something, and then somebody would go play something, and then somebody would play something, and then he'd play something, and then Steve would go, and he'd hook it together, and he'd arrange it all, and then I would go, and I would rock out. That's how he made Story of a Rockstar. Uh, when we did 100 Miles, the first song to kind of like, have people take me serious as an artist while I was at UGA. Um, uh, it was just a guitar. My, my my friend Tyler just played a guitar loop, basically, like just had played it right there and it had no breakdowns, no drums, just the same thing, the whole song. And I made the whole song, sang the whole thing. And then we added drums afterwards. And I don't know, man, I just became an artist. I would be there later, you know, I'd be there yeah, till about- Yeah, you'd stay there till like- I'd stay there till about like two in the morning and then I would go to the, I'd go to strip clubs or I'd go to clubs or I'd go to bars and I would perform. Cause you're already manager, in Atlanta. So, yeah. My manager was, was having me pull up to places and perform or get my songs played or throw money in the club or would bring me to Kirkwood where Free Bands was and I would be with Casino or some of those- It's a business uh, expense, bro. He yeah, man, he just, was, he just was taking me all around, man. He was taking me in the streets. He was, he was showing me how things were. He was, he was like just showing me another side of things and introducing me to another, a lot of artists, a lot of OGs. And um, 
Yeah, that's that's kind of how it all happened. Yeah, so then he literally like three and then, four, and then three, drive four in the morning, Athens. drive back to Athens. Yeah, drive back into and Athens do it all over again and Jeez. sleep, sleep for a few hours, and then sometimes Fucking I would try insane. to like, and I would be exhausted. Man, I heard like, the schedule and I like. Yeah, I would be exhausted. And my teammates knew because they got tired. Because then I would want to pop my shit, man. I wanted people to know how, how hard I was working and what I had going on because I wanted to inspire people, right? Like, I remember, like, just the crazy amount of freaking views I would get, man. Like, while I was at UGA, like, when I was doing that, when I'd be driving at night, I'd get, like, 20,000 story views and, and stuff like that, bro. Like, people just checking out and... Like just the songs I was making and, and everything and the people I was hanging out with on a daily basis and how we all like my sophomore year when I was really deep into music, when I was traveling and everything, a lot of us all split up and went to different schools after that year. Justin went to Ohio State, my boy Brent Cox Shout went to out Florida, Ohio State. Uh, Florida University, Jaden Hunter went to uh uh Western Kentucky. We just everybody split up, man, and, and everybody did what they did what they had to do and I don't know. It's, it's just inevitable. amazing. But it was all a mindset thing, right? So, like, me, Cole Hartman, going to the NFL and killing it. Like, all these guys, like, we just had a certain mindset approaching while we were doing it. Like, everybody was like, when I get to the NFL, when I get here, when I do this, when I do this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And it was just, that's the same energy I had. So, I knew, like, me being an artist, I'm not going to be somebody who steps backwards. I'm, I'm going to be somebody who builds off the momentum of what I've already done. I had already gone viral once. I'm like, I know I can do it again. Once you do something once, you can do it again. You get a hit song, you can do it again. So once you have that evidence to yourself, you see what you can do. When 100 Miles blew up, it had like 100K in the first like two months or something like that, a month or wow. two on Spotify. So I was like, okay, bet. Like it's working. And I was so nervous to put that song out because it was alternative and I felt like people would think I was soft and different things like that. But it's just music, you know what I mean? And that's what opened my mind up. But um, and now it's over a million. That's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, he was so productive, man. I I, I uh, heard this one story. Even on your car rides to the studio, yeah. Don't take this as advice, kids. But he was like writing. driving and writing songs. Yeah, that's how I do it. Like I wrote. Yeah. Uh, I was like, bruh. This like, song called Questions, on. man. It was like the first song that made my management everybody like kind of freak out. It was before I made 100 Miles. We never put it out because the beat had already been bought on YouTube. You know mm -hmm. how like you. I mean, you're sold. a producer. Yeah, sold. In, in brackets. But, but they had that shit in the fucking bio, so I didn't know. And then the producer was so, I mean, my uh, manager was so mad at me. But um, I made this song, man. I remember I would I would drive with my knees, and I would write the song while I was singing. So that, that's a trend we've seen on the that. podcast, bro. Yeah, well, People you, write in the car. Like, this is, you're well, not the first person to say privacy, that. You need privacy, man. You need privacy to yeah. be able to sing. Like the song Keep your like, hands on the wheel if you can. Yeah, I'm like, no, do you? Like when you're when you're singing, like it's embarrassing to like try to. It's like I don't know, man. Like sometimes you just have that comfort of being by yourself. You'll you'll push yourself further. Yeah. You'll try things, and, and you can turn it up. Yeah, you know, man. You can vibe. And just I don't know. That's just what I found for me. You know, in that moment, and I've I've had to experiment on what you know is my best creative process throughout building as an artist. But yeah, that's definitely something I did early on. No, it's interesting because. I guess the creative process, maybe you do want to be alone, but you're clearly someone, just like a lot of artists, love being on stage, love performing. So I guess it's more about like wanting to be alone while making the art, yeah. but then being okay, of course, you Presenting know, he's not it. scared of like performing. This dude rocks oh, yeah. out on stage. Oh I mean, yeah, but, not at all. I've gotten booed all, you know, I'm, I've, I've been, I've had people in the crowd like boo. Cause I've had, a, it's crazy. Like, you know, y'all had, um, Gabriel opened up for Young Nudie recently. Yeah, yeah. I opened Athens. up for Young Nudie in, in 2018, man, and uh, and Hoodridge Pablo Juan and the sailing team. Shout out Hoodridge Pablo Juan. And yeah. uh, freaking, there were people in the crowd that had their hand up like this. Damn. Wow. And some people loved it. You know, some people are turned. But that was back when me and Tyreek were performing. And we just used to get these crazy looks, man. Packed out shows, like, just because of us being UGA football players. And so that's how I, I learned. You know, no one just, at the Young Nudie show gave a fuck about that. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, bring on Young Nudie. Like, yeah. I go, because they went from, bro, this, it's their fault. They, this is how they did. They went Hoodridge Pablo 1, Wix Patton, Young Nudie, sailing team. Why was Wix Patton after Hood Rich Pablo yeah. won? Yeah. I should have been before. Yeah, I'm like, I love you and all, but like, yeah. <laughs> Hood Rich Pablo won was obviously I don't know. probably I guess they, a... they thought UGA hold, held some weight, but I'm like, these people are not knowing my music. Yeah. Like, it's not like that. Like, Yeah. No, that's tough. That's tough. So, you know what? <laughs> We've had lit shows too, though. That's all good. What, what similarities would you say 
are are between the approaches of of like how you approach music and then how you approach sports because we've talked about this on a, on a previous episode of kind of like yeah the, the, yeah exactly the similarities between the two like what what types of things do you think were were similar to like how you were approaching you know training and eating and yeah. all that shit like you know is it the super saiyan like is it <laughs> kind of thing it's mental determination man and, and discipline like yeah. being able to just work that hard when no one's watching right and not doing shit because you have to but doing it because like like i was i was putting crazy like i remember like being even a, a senior in high school like uh at spring practice like being in my uh little room or whatever like you know we were all staying in these bunks and doing push-ups like for like two hours every single night and doing sit-ups and like and and like going and every night in my first sem- two semesters at Georgia as a freshman like going and running like three miles around the campus and doing rocky type shit. I've always like just tried to do that type of element and because you have to feel like the goat like to be the goat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like in the studio, like I realized, Good one. you know, you can you can go out and you can do all this branding stuff. You can do a bunch of content. You can do all these things and network and all this stuff and then get lost and. Realize like you have to put in so much work in the studio and be the goat when it comes to being an artist and so it's just a balance of things and all the things that you do like in sports you know having a balance of eating right working out right training right but then doing a lot of game speed stuff doing a lot of game play stuff like I have to be in the studio creating you know I don't like doing uh, I like doing a lot of live shows you have to stay you know like in sports, you have to keep that repetition of work ethic, right? Yeah. To stay good at it, you know what I mean? To stay at that high level. You have to be doing it multiple times a week. With music, it's the same way. You take too much time off and you can lose. You can literally sit there and sometimes question your ability and be like, am I even supposed to do this? Yeah. If you take too much time off. And imposter you, and then, syndrome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, imposter syndrome. And then you're like, you're like, holy shit, I've wasted my whole life. Like, what am I doing? Like, am I Creativity supposed to be here? is a muscle. And it's scary it as hell. Yeah, you have to keep it working out, man. And you have to, and you have to wear it. Because the most beautiful thing is feeling like, like, um, like Jack Harlow said, like, there's moments where you feel like you're the hottest. You know what I'm saying? Where, like, no matter what you do, you feel like it's dope, right? No matter what you create. And then when you're on the field, like, when I was, you know, what, I, what made me feel like, all right, bet, like, even though all these guys maybe have way more years on me, I'm, I'm coming out here and saucing up the starting defense on the scout team as a freshman, catching passes and, and pissing them off and, and starting and having fights and shit. And it all happened because I'm, I'm being creative with my routes, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they gave me a post route, but how can I sauce it up and, and give them a juke to the right and, and run it? And, and only a way Wix Patton can run it and use what I, you know, what I, my highlighted skill set, right? So being able to use the fact that I'm tall and, and can run this or do this or do this and utilize that with the route that I'm running, right? So like the songs that I'm giving with music, you use the highlighted abilities that you have as an artist. If you can really sing or hit these notes or these melodies, you want to do, you know, songs that are more melody driven and find things that bring out that highlighted ability. So football is the same way. Sports is the same way in general. So that's just kind of like why it was such an easy... Um, I mean, I dropped so much weight. Like, I, I really was like, if I'm going to be an artist as a profession, you know, like, this is a serious, serious thing. When you get to college, man, like, you're really setting yourself up for what you're going to do for your living. So whatever you do in life, you got to go hard at it. And I was like, you know, the only way I'm going to really be an artist is by really fully living my truth and being an artist and dedicating all my time and going through that struggle and dealing with what these artists deal with to become what they become and having a story and that's deeper than what my story already was and having to live through all these things and gain the talent and be around artists and be around OGs and people that can really, you know, help me navigate. Cause I realized too, it was like, there were so many sacrifices and things having to be made. And like, you, you know, people aren't going to go and wake up in the morning and play my music because, or play my music over the weekend because, Oh yeah, you know, today I want to listen to this dude because he's a UGA graduate. He's a right. UGA football player right. who had a viral moment. I, I, I want to play this dude today. It's a cool story. Now they're gonna play whatever it sounds the best. So I knew what mm-hmm. I was competing with musically, and so I'm like, you know, if I want to be at that level, I have to put that type of time in and discipline and and be that. You know? Yeah, it's. I mean, something that hit home that you said was finding that superpower. Mm-hmm. That's the shit we talk about. Of yep. like, everyone has something. That yeah. makes them unique, and the, and and I think you termed it like the highlighted ability, right? Of like you were having to look deep, whether it was football or now that it's music. Of like, why am I special? Yeah, and that's not to say that like the answer should be you're not. It should be you are. But here's why. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I think that like that's the people ultimate. Get, people get caught up in the fact, and I'm gonna cut you off at all. No, you're good. 
people get caught up in the fact that it gets revealed after a certain amount of events have to take place in order for it to happen, right? So like me being an artist, it wasn't time yet. I didn't have shit to talk about as an artist. Fuck am I going to talk about at that point in my life? You know what I'm Class. saying? Class. <laughs> Routes, football, <laughs> practice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> even, But even just like in high school, dropping music and everything, and then being cut in football and, and how bad that hurt and how humiliating that was at the time. I was the only person in my whole grade that got cut, bro. So like everybody on the team is wow. wearing jerseys. It just was humiliating, bro. So everybody at the school knew I didn't make the team. You're there at every practice the whole summer. You know, people people know what's going on. So when that happened, it makes you trauma, hate hate that sport and things like that. So when it came back and became what it was, just for me to quit and be an artist and give up music at the time and how hard it used to be when I was in the rooms with my friends and, and my best friend who was an artist. And every time we're all getting together, he's playing new music and all that. It used to kill me, man. I used to have to leave the room because I would feel so sick to my stomach that I didn't have music and I wasn't an artist. Like, it used to kill me. I used to be like, that's... Cause I knew that's who I was inside, but it was like I felt like I was deep in. Like I don't even know if I love football the way that I did. Maybe it was just a training aspect. Maybe it was just the fact that I was found a way to elevate in life. I found my path of what I thought it was, but it was my path at that time, you know. So that's why it's like whatever it is in front of you, go hard at it and trust the process because whatever you're supposed to do is gonna reveal itself naturally. Like music found its way back to me naturally. You know what I mean? Like, and it just happened in a way where I was like. Okay, yeah, this is what I've always wanted. Let's do it. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you mentioned that you kind of, you know, hung up football. Uh, you know, you yeah. had to make this decision of like, yo, if I want to go all in on the artist shit, I got to go all in. Right. And like, what was that decision making process like? Once the NCAA told me, you know what I mean? Like, you've been, you know, you violated the rules with, you know, with putting out music and, and on all platforms and, and also utilizing your Is name. that a rule? Yeah, you, well, it's a rule that you can't use your name and likeness. It was a rule. You can't use your la name and likeness in the NCAA to make money. Mm. And I had a song called Go Dogs Out on all platforms, which yeah. had, like, you know, basically like a UGA anthem. And they're saying, you know, well, you have these UGA fans. You have this platform as a football player. You can't make money as a musician. And they just changed the rule last year. Good. But before, yeah, they were saying, like, you know, if you want to keep playing, take down all your songs, all the platforms and your social media posts and stuff like that. You said, hell no. So I was like, I'm going to finish out the season and drop out because I already knew what I had musically. I, I took some time to think about it. And then I was like, nah, this is what I'm doing. And my parents begged me not to drop out until they understood. My grandparents, my management, everybody tried to talk me out of it at the time. But... It's kind of like one of those things that you know who you are on the inside and you know what you can do. And I feel like I had, again, proved enough of myself. This is what I can do. And I knew with the amount of time put in what I could do. And I was like, you know, I'm willing to drop out, move back home, lose all the momentum of what I've built and essentially have to restart and rebuild as an artist and prove that I'm hotter than all these other artists out here who have been doing it for years and years and years. Kind of like these football players who've been doing it for years and years and years, but it was like I knew like I'm gonna outwork these people and then my talent's gonna show because at the end of the day, when you when you mix like hard work, something that you love and like, you know, like that passion, like you're gonna go crazy at it. You're gonna be obsessed. It's not it's not gonna feel like work. You know yeah. what I mean? So when football yeah. and things like that, one. yeah, you, you yes. gotta feel like it's not work. You gotta be obsessed with it. That's how you really no, like that's how you like you said that superpower, man. It's, it's just having all three of those together. So, yeah, no, that's 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 facts. So, that's yeah, a great one. Um, you, well, so you take the leap of faith, right? And and you know you start doing music full time. You know what was getting in the rhythm of that like? You know, because going from you know you are you know you always had something to do when you were playing football and doing school or whatever, right? But so kind of getting back to a point where you were just doing music, yeah. Did you feel like, oh, fuck, like... Whoop. Got a lot more free time. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> nah, what do I do? I, uh, like, how did you... I had a team already in place, man. I, I didn't drop out with, like, no plan or no team or nothing. Like, yeah. I already had some shit shaking. I had some people that were investing in me already. I had mixes and masters. I had shows. I had, you know, some, some streams already coming in. So I was like, you know what? Like, this is what we're going to do. And at the time, I had uh, Bubba Sparks Management who was managing me. And then um, three days after I dropped out... I had this dude reach out to me named City um, Under Siege who runs a label called Run It Up Records and they're killing it. And uh, he DM'd me and was like, yo, you're super dope. Like, I feel like you're a Post Malone 2.0. But listen, but this is how this dude reached out to me. So, my, so there's a guy who lives down the street who's an attorney down my street and my dad knows him. My dad had sent him the 100 Miles music video like, yo, check this out. 
that guy was like, oh, this is dope. While he checked out the music video, he was at lunch with that guy, City, sitting across uh-huh. from him. So then he's like, yo, check this out. This is my, uh, this is my buddy's son. Yeah. So then he's watching and he's like, oh, this dude is sick as fuck. Let me see his Instagram. Checks out my stuff. DMs me. He was like, yo, you're hard as fuck. You're a Post Malone 2.0. That's how that happened. So then later on, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's link up sometime, whatever. That night, I go and meet that attorney who had, you know, met uh, with with that dude, City, because we were going to Chops that night, basically, just to uh, meet my team, who then was, uh, you know, Bubba which, Sparks which, which Management. Which caught fire last week, right? Yeah. What? Chops. It did? Yeah. I don't know. I just went there and spent, like, my whole life savings. Yeah, it's so a lot like, of money. So. There was a huge fire. My buddy was there. They just evacuated everyone. No one paid. Oh, wow. And, oh, hell no. Nah. Or it, it might have been the place right next to Chops. But, oh, wow. Well. Anyway. But, yeah, bro, nice restaurant. So, anyways, yeah, my whole <laughs> yeah, team was there. there. Steve, everybody was there. <laughs> And, um, man, like, so, okay, yeah, so we, we had that meeting at Chops. So before I go to Chops, whenever I go to meet my parents at the, uh, at the firm where, you know, the, the lawyer was at who was just coming basically because he's a friend of, my, friend of my dad's and everything and just, you know, I guess just wanted to come because he likes Chops. He was like, you know, oh, uh, in passing, this dude, Don Perry, was there who is partners with a guy named Joel Katz, just a big entertainment consultant. He's like, you know, oh, you should meet this guy, Wix Patton. So I come up, I dap him up. I'm like, what's up, man? I'm Wix. He thought I was funny. So then we just, you know, chopped up a conversation and everything. And next thing you know, he was interested in me. And um, that night at Chops, he just pulled up with City. And they just showed up out of nowhere, sat down at the table with us, paid for the whole thing, and was just like super interested, you know, met my parents and everything. And that night told me like, your life's about to change from this night forward because I'm about to like step into your situation. So that's what happened. Like that next week, um, me and my management decided to part ways and I started taking meetings with with major labels and everything. And so I got with Oomp Camp like a week later and well, shout out Oomp Camp. <laughs> Well, so did that happen through the city? That happened through city. Well, city, city, city went and flew me out to LA that next week after meeting him okay. to shoot the 100 Miles music video. So we hadn't shot the video yet. We just had the song. Let me rephrase that. Okay. My dad had just sent the 100 Miles song to City. So okay. City liked the song. Yeah. Okay. The music video came after after the meeting at Chops when we, when we ate there. That next week, he flew me out. Yeah, he's like, dude, we got to shoot a video right now. Like, this shit's going yeah. in. He's going up right now. So, I like yeah. how City moves. Yeah, yeah me City, too. It was dope. Yeah, so they fly me out there. They, they have a Bentley. They have a freaking mansion. That's where I met this artist, Max Sauce. They're managing the artist Max Sauce in Atlanta. Sponsored at the time. by McDonald's. Yeah, nah, oh he's God. he's he's dope, man. He's got that song. Good morning. Today is a wonderful day. Today, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Max Sauce. We'd love, love to, to have, have you on, you on podcast, my burger. Man. Yeah, I mean, he, on the podcast. He's lit. He's lit. Okay, but <laughs> shout out Max Sauce. But yeah, yeah, shout out Max Sauce. So sure. yeah, got with them, man. Got the video and everything. Anyways, after that. End up getting with Oont Camp and doing a session with Big Corey. We do two songs and kind of kept in touch. Big Corey is Oont Camp. Yeah, Big Corey is Oont Camp. Yeah, yeah he's um, producer. He's a he's a super producer, man. Yeah. And he, uh, yeah, just we, we started working together. Next thing you know, we were working like three times a week, four times a week, and then yeah, decided to just keep working with them. Yeah, I'm always interested. I mean, we talked about it a little bit off camera, but I want to you know get your take on it. You know, for everyone else to hear what what have you liked working? What have you liked about working with Oont Camp? Right, because yeah. I'm always interested in like people getting into situations. Yeah. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You seem to be, you know, Happy. liking the, yeah. you know, the, yeah, you know, well, I guess the workflow. Like, what, what do you like about it? I'm fortunate enough because they have a team of producers who can give me any kind of vibe that I'm looking for mm-hmm. in a very high level way. You got DJ Monte, who's a super producer, who's a diamond level producer. He produced Low by Flo Rida. Yeah. He produced Walk oh, wow. It Out. Yeah. He produced Two yeah. Step. He produced I Like That with Kaylani and T Pain. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. just just a great producer, man. So I got stuff from him and, and they're curating stuff for me. Big Corey, who's just creating all different types of genres for me, and Dota and New Drip, who's who's creating high level hip hop stuff. He's got records with Future and, and Gunna and Thug and Saw Baby and so I just I just I'm fortunate to have a high level, you know, like selection of just different options and um I don't know, man. Just the bar is continually raised because they're they're working with different artists, you know, with Earth Gang and, and Dreamville and uh, Young Jeezy and, and different people like that. So I feel like I'm always trying to just make exciting stuff that they can be able to go and show off to people. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Because they're taking major label deal, you know, it's meetings with me and I got turned down by Def Jam and 
I've got turned down by 300. Not necessarily turned down. I don't even know if I'm supposed to disclose that, but just, just took This is a one more time exclusive. Took, 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 Fuck you, uh, Def Jam. <laughs> <laughs> three hundred. Took meetings with them and they didn't the, sign the me. So I call that turning down. Do so. not represent the opinions of one more time. But look, but yeah, nah, but look. <laughs> Y'all know how it is, man. Yeah. Just, and there's a timing for everything. So, you know, at some points you got to level, you, you don't even showcase what you, you know, necessarily have in you maybe at that period of time. Yeah. So you got to keep leveling up and going through life and becoming the person that you're meant to be. So it ain't even, I don't even trip about it. They're just hard L's in the moment, you know? Not for sure. But it's, it's interesting. So, Oomp Camp is the label, though, right? Atlantic Global Music is the label. So oh, okay, but it's it's affiliated with Oomp yeah, Camp. it's affiliated with Oomp Camp because basically Oomp Camp is the production side of the label, and then they brought in RZ3, who was the management side, um, which yeah. is Tricky Stewart and their team. Yeah, major. Um, but that's that's so interesting because I mean, I think that you know we've talked about you you know we're kind of doing our own little label thing here at one more time, you know, music and like Henry obviously being a producer. I think it's cool that you have that at your disposal because you don't always have that. Yeah. Some of these majors of course have publishing entities that they have producers signed to them, you know, yeah. on, a, on a publishing deal or whatnot, but it's kind of cool that you found the most value, honestly, in the fact that they bring you producers. Yeah. I mean, man, you just got to build or, a team, you know, man. That's why everybody's, everybody's playing a role. And that's why I've just tried to play my role to the fullest, whether I was a writer, whether I'm an artist, but I made sure end. that, yeah, but I made, I made yeah, but I made sure that I was gonna be the best artist on the roster or wherever I was at, and I had to work my way up to gain that respect to work with some of these guys. And like, uh, I'm different than any artist Oom Camp has ever had. I know for sure. And so I don't know. I just I embrace the fact that I'm an individual, and I think that that's allowed me to be able to explore more and more of who I am as a person, and then who I can be as an artist, and you know what type of people I can touch because. As a you know, as a person growing up, I've been able to connect to all kinds of people and all different types of social groups and circles and all of that. I don't know. I've always just found that empathy with people or just that connectability, relatability, and I've just tried to showcase that with music, you know? No, for sure. So I'm not sure if you want to share. We were kind of playing some unreleased shit. I mean, what's yeah. on the roadmap for you, you know, coming up? John can, we, can we get a one more time exclusive? <laughs> we can get a one more time exclusive. Let's go. What's going on? What are you dropping next? I'm dropping John Wicks. That's the next single. John Wicks. And um And the video is fucking yeah, fire. Yeah, show my boys the video. And the Video's song nice. is fucking fire. But the song's not new to maybe a lot of your fans. Nah, man. The this song has been has been a staple song for me since 2019. Without but it, being but released. It's not out. But it's not out. So that shows yeah. you artists that he actually doesn't recommend doing this, but if you feel the need to not release a song, you can still have it be part of your show. You yeah. know, uh, everything's the right time, man. Sometimes you know you just need the right. Sometimes you just want the right justification for what you feel like your art needs to represent, right? Yeah. And you just don't have that budget then, or you just don't have the right situation, or you're just like, man, like I know what this song deserves. I know how it can be appreciated and presented if I can just bring it together. So I get it. But for me, man, I just needed to find my look, man. Like a whole year and a half of artist development for me was figuring out my label, trying to figure out who the hell I was and like what I was, you know, and, and all these things. And they're trying to figure out what I should look like and all these things. But then what was dumb was the whole time I just needed to naturally become who I was and, and find that naturally and not try to be fit some type of image that people wanted or people thought I was or anything like that, but just yeah. being me. So I don't know. That's one Yo, of the that's coolest crazy, things. Like what? You know, what were some of those artist development meetings like? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Were you looking up like Google images of like- No, not other, at all. You know they're bringing I mean? in real, they're bringing in real stylists and and and, okay. and like, and like, I don't even know the, the where I guess like you, like real artist developers, like these people were looking at, they had my color palettes held up. They had pictures of me. They had um, different choreography training they thought I should do. They had different- Damn. Everything, everything, how I needed to do my hair, which hair stylist I needed to go to, what color my hair needed to be, uh, what type of colors, outfits look best on me, all types of angles, what angles look best on me. That's crazy. Yeah, they found all these things, man. And then with music videos and all this stuff like that, what I realized, you just have to do it. Like, And I, and I got pissed off that it's all love, but I got pissed off that one of my managers had, had told me, uh, you know, I said like some of his artists had been doing some uh, artist rehearsals with the choreographer and everything and kind of like, you know, at, a, at a, a studio and all that. And I was wanting the same thing. And he was just like, practice in the mirror. 
He just mm. said, just make sure you just keep practicing the mirror. And that shit earn it. pissed me off. But you do need to earn it. I get that. You should earn it or whatever. But I was, I felt like, I felt like I made the team, but I wasn't like a vet, so I wasn't getting that treatment. You know mm. what I'm saying? It mm. felt like UGA being a walk-on and not on scholarship and mm. certain amenities that I didn't get back then. Like I was like, slow down, Rook. Shit. Slow down, Rook. I ain't like that shit, bro. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm gonna start. Now, that doing, would piss me I'm gonna start too. doing. Yeah. I was like, you know, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start being the king of these showcases in because I already yeah. knew what I was talking about. I wasn't just like a independent artist by myself with nobody underground with nothing. I at least had a team. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go and just like you know these showcases are hitting me up. I'm gonna just tell them like, yeah, make me the headliner. I'll pull up. And so then they're making me the headliner. They're, they're giving me a little minute. I'm doing four songs or whatever, and I'm doing live what I viewed live practice. I was getting to go and perform with a band. I was doing these Tuesday nights, these Twisted Tuesdays with this band called Nobody Band and bringing out our own fan base. You know, we're packing out these shows and we're just creating this movement. And I, and I realized, you know, I grew up watching MGK and Mike Studd and g -Eazy, just different artists like that had, these, Wiz Khalifa that had these movements, man, that were just so raw that like, you've seen their shows, you've seen their tour vlogs. And I was like, this is the way I need to do it. I can't just be no, end, like, like somebody who just pops out with these crazy ass videos out of nowhere and everything like that. Like people need to see- The journey. My hustle, man, and, yeah. me, and me come up. But at the same time, you know, like, when things kind of popped off after me dropping out, like I moved fast, I tried to move all this momentum. So I felt like I needed everything to be a certain way, which was also why I held the records. But, you know, it's all hard work and I don't know, man. Yeah. No, it's crazy. You're gonna, Ben's going to hate you if this sign's not straight. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he takes so much hey, time. Hey, I'm, I'm not that like, anal. Pretty kind of hard, but I, lo I love you for it. But yeah, speaking of uh, taking hard work, you're going to need to really step your game up for this last segment of the One More Time Podcast. Oh, Henry, where shit. are we at? Yeah. Wix. We're at the Rapid Fire Rampage. Let's go. I'm no, ready. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but he's ready regardless. So it's a, it's gonna be a three part rampage. I have high expectations for this one. Come actually. on, I'm not familiar. Let's go. I, I, oh, just already how he is. I, I think he's gonna nail it. This is gonna be. Sick. I got ADHD. I got this. This is great. <laughs> part one of the rampage. Wix Patton episode thirty nine. Rampage, 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 rampage. Well, explain the rampage. I don't need to. He's ready to go. Rampage, 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 rampage. rampage, rampage. <laughs> what is your favorite quality about yourself? Uh, randomness. What is your least favorite quality about yourself? Anxiety. Is that a quality? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Absolutely. All right, cool. It took 41 years. 41 years for UGA to win another championship. When 41, will the next one? 42, 43, 44. <laughs> I love that song. Next one? When will the next one come? Probably next year. Give us one thing about being an artist that no one ever told you when you signed up. Um, did I be one of the greatest? Fire. Give us three of your favorite artists or bands of all time. <sighs> <laughs> and doesn't have to be top three. And and I know one of them. So if you if you cap on this, John Bellion. Yes, that's that was the it. one. <laughs> it's the first one. Thank Shout God. Right. Yo, you were obsessed even, with John Bellion. Yeah, I was. I was. I don't even listen to him that much anymore because he doesn't really drop that much music. But but he's still in. But the, it was your first. Thank I really. God all right, right that. now I really really fuck with this uh, dude named Big Baby Gucci. Big Baby Gucci. <laughs> he's, he's hard. Man. He sounds like he's, a meme. Where is, where is he from? Sounds like a meme. Uh, I think he's from North Carolina. I'm not really sure. He might be from Atlanta. I don't know. But I told him the other day. I was like, bro, you you hard, bro. And he was like, appreciate it, gang. Keep going. So we got a we got a big baby Gucci yeah, wish song boy. coming soon. Maybe we need yeah. one more. Big baby dope. Gucci. We'd oh, love to have you on, on the podcast, podcast, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, make it happen, Wix. Come yeah, on, bro. That, uh, we need one more though. One more. Uh I gotta give it okay, I, I gotta I gotta honestly this people are gonna be like, why? I gotta give this one to either can I give like a three part series right here? Okay. Sure. A G Easy Um Coldplay. In Lincoln Park. Wix, if you were arrested, what would your friends and family assume it was for? Murder. <laughs> God. What is one thing everyone visiting Athens for the first time should do? Uh ha 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 ha. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Wix, you have to delete three states. Which ones are you deleting? Uh. Alabama, for sure. 
then Georgia will win every year. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say let's get rid of one of the Dakotas. Definitely don't need two Dakotas. Facts. That's obsessive. <laughs> and then I think Rhode Island. Do we care about Rhode Island? You don't. Uh, no, Maine? No, no. no they just have three. lobster. They just have lobster. three. Keep Maine. I will right, we'll keep Maine. Yeah, you're good. That's three. Right, that's, that's great. That's cool. Great answer. Cool. Wix, how many blueberries would fit inside a Nissan Altima? These are the important questions. I'd say 19 million. Damn. A lot of blueberries. Sounds kind of right. No, nah, that's too many. Five too million. Too late. Too late. I don't know. 19 man. million. Fuck. Definitely lower than that, but but we'll take it. Yeah, lower than that. That's too many blueberries. <laughs> Shitload of blueberries. That's so many blueberries, bro. Nineteen million. Gary V. Would One have a million. Yeah, field fit, day a with. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Last question for part one. Weeks on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate Ben as an interviewer? I give my guy a nine. My guy. Yo. Yeah, he's killing it with okay. the notes. He's doing okay. good. Okay. Moving on, part two of the rampage. This is the this or that section. Are you ready? Yeah. Atlanta or Athens? Damn, bro. Coming out the gate swinging. <laughs> What's up with that? Dude, that was... <laughs> Can't compare. That's both. Not a, that's not an acceptable answer. Both, both. both of that's acceptable. Oh, God. Acceptable. Henry. It's fine. Yeah, I always yeah, don't make me switch up on... Lyrics or flow? Flow. Singing or rapping? Fuck that. Go back. Too late. Damn it. Flow's a better answer, if you ask me anyway. Stick with that one. Yeah, but you know, what if you're not talking about shit? And he's just, I guess, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but a lot if of you're talking about shit that. and it doesn't ride, then who cares what you're talking about? Yeah, you know, you're you can right. say gibberish if it flows, it still sounds good. A hop and a grooting, <laughs> came through sheer like shooting, <laughs> yeah. feel like wooting. You know, you come through with a flow like that, you couldn't be talking about say nothing. Anything. Exactly. And exactly. it's just like killer, bruh. Singing or rapping? Sapping. Sing rapping. Simping. Ringing. Melodies or drums? Melodies. Writing in the studio, at home, or in the car? Punching in. I like punching in, no writing. I don't got uh, oh. the type of, um, what's the word, patience anymore. So at the studio? Yeah, I'm way too uh, anxious. Would you rather have your ex's name tatted on your face or have no front teeth? What, what type of, uh, what does it look like? like what's Cheek, the, uh, like very readable. <laughs> can it look cool? Like, does it sure. have like some? Yeah, style? it can be what like type of, uh, what type of font? Very readable, but you can choose any font of your choice. I need a definitely not no Times no Roman. I need like some type of uh, old English font. So, so, you're so going he's, with the he's, he's clearly going with the tat. Yeah. Going with the tat. He wants his teeth. You have to either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for this next one. Hang on, hang on. Would you rather permanently? Have to sing instead of talk or permanently dance instead of walk? Oh, it's both of them fire. Both of them fire. Would you rather just do both? <laughs> both. Voluntarily? Both. Okay. Voluntarily take it. Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay, I know I got to choose one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great visual? Dance, dance while walking. That's yeah, sick. That's I think sick. I would say the same. Battle against one elephant-sized cockroach or 7,000 cockroach-sized elephants? Seven thousand cockroach elephants, cause uh, that's too big, bro. It's and, a big and, ass cockroach. And them elephants not gonna hurt, bro. They they gonna, <laughs> they, gonna hit you, they gonna hit your shoe and just gonna fall over. Like I think you're right. I yeah. won that one. What you gonna do with a big ass cockroach that big? You're fucked. You're <laughs> yeah, fucked. It's over with. Can they? What do cockroaches do though? They don't bite don't, or anything. I don't they think just, so. Yeah, don't but know. it's what just, do they do? just it's the disgusting factor. I, I don't ever want to even. I, I'm disgusted thinking about it. I so would I feel sure bad. Sure as hell killing, don't want to battle it. I would feel bad killing a bunch of little baby elephants. That would be sad. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. <laughs> okay, a few more, a few more, a few more, a few more for this. God, Peta's gonna flag this go. video, man. Like, we gotta scoop him up in a little plastic bag or something. Peta's the worst, anyway. But I didn't say that. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Purple or green? Green. Whiskey or beer? Whiskey. Hakuna Matata or YOLO? Not prepared for this. <laughs> YOLO. Oh! 
Part two of the rampage. Part two. 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 He's above average, clearly. Yeah, doing very well. Thank you. He might even make the Hall of Fame. It's gonna come down to this last. Females say that shit all the time. God, I walked right into that. Wix, the last part is the word association. Word, okay, word, word, word. the rapider, the better. That's, I'm gonna give you one word, whatever comes off the top of your head, right back at me. Here we go. Rapper! Guitar. Hero. Helicopter. Flyer. Queen. B. Contract. Sign it. Any contract. <laughs> okay, moving on. Barbecue. Need it. Studio. Murder scene. Sadness. All the time. Platinum. Veins. Onion. Henry's breath. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Lil. Wicks. <laughs> like Lil Wicks, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, we got it. Hella, hella <laughs> AKA type shit. Grandpa. Wicks. Rick. Grandpa, <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa Rick. Rick. Yeah, yeah like Grandpa it. Rick. SoundCloud. King. Bass. Bass? Bass. I <laughs> 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 demonstrate it. Turn it up! One hundred dollars. No, oh, man. Oh no. Wah, the whole thing. Wah, wah. Keep it. Keep it. One hundred. A hundred miles. Oh. Man. Oh. <laughs> uh, Most anti into a rampage. Hundred that, miles. That's good. Is that what y'all wanted me to do? I set you up for great. Run that shit back, bro. Run that shit back. Run it back. Right. Run it back. We are, one, back. We are one more time. Right, go, go, we, yeah. we are one more time. One more okay, time. Okay. <clears throat> shut up. Shut up. Everybody shut up. Shut up. 100. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Miles. Wow. Oh! Yeah, baby. The most epic ending wow. to the most Appreciate epic it, rampage. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate y'all's patience. Legendary yeah. rampage. No, that, that was great, man. That was cool. On, Enjoy that. On, honestly, I mean, huge gems. Like, really? Lot, yeah. Lots of inspirational shit. I mean, I yeah, feel like man. you really understand the determination and work ethic that it takes. Obviously you're still on your way, but you know, I think you got the right mindset, which is half the battle, if not more in this shit. Cause Agreed. it really is figuring out who you are, taking the fucking action to actually make the shit happen. And I think that you're, you know, definitely taking those steps. The video you showed us is fire. If John Wicks is not out yet, make sure you tap in and follow this guy so that when it drops, you are there. Really appreciate the conversation, man. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate you too, bro. Really had a good time. Thanks, my guy. Henry, it. until next week, what are we doing? Getting out of here. Getting the fuck out. Peace. Hey, so I get my 10,000 now or do I get it when I leave? Ben, cut the mics. Oh, God. Pop that shit like one more time. Pop that one more time. Pop that shit like one more time.